But right now, this, the, the website is a green building blog uh, for our climate. And basically, the intent is to promote revolutionary technologies, new ways of doing things, but also to uh, basically bring together people so that these issues uh, can become better known and then have like an army of professionals who can actually solve these problems on behalf of the public. And so that's, that's the whole intent behind this, and that's where we're moving forward. Um, so the message that I'm here to tell you is like we can have a more valuable, more comfortable, safer home at approximately the same cost if you understand uh, the home as a system. And um, it's, it's really an investment which will pay you back over time. And most people don't really think of their home as an investment in tier. And as I'm going to show in this, in this uh, presentation, you know, we're, we're kind of living in la-la land right now where energy prices are very low. Um, it's not very sustainable, and uh, if we do things right, it's better for us long term. So, and it, by the way, as education grows around this topic, you know, the demand for higher efficiency is going to improve. So, if you do this, you're going to have a better resale value, and that's going to come with education. So, this is Rob Dumont's home. Rob is here in the audience, and his house does not have a furnace because it doesn't really need one. It's very efficient. I was lucky enough to house it for him recently, and uh, I got to take some photos that made their way into this presentation. Um, but basically, his house is very well insulated. The, the walls are this thick. Um, they are about 16 inches thick. It's an R60 versus what most people do here, which is about R16 uh, when thermal bridging is accounted for and that kind of thing. And other technologies within the house, which I discuss within the book. Um, but basically, to understand how much heat his house uses at minus 34, that's it. Uh, it's 1,320 square feet per floor uh, footprint. What's your living space per floor, Rob? 1,120 square feet per floor. So, how many people think that they could heat their entire, even one floor, with just their burners going at minus 34? <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> so this, I think this is rather remarkable, and if you actually like, thought of this in terms of a natural gas fireplace, that's about the same amount of energy that a natural gas fireplace puts out. But Rob doesn't like natural gas because, uh, well, you'll see why in this presentation, but uh, basically this is the amount of heat that it takes to run his house. So, and this was achieved with a double wall. Um, which I discuss in the book, but basically it eliminates thermal bridging and it produces a high R value by separating the cold outside from the hot inside. And that's, that's basically what it is. So basically what we can do is reduce our energy dependence and our bills. We can protect ourselves from energy price fluctuations. We increase our comfort and our health. And by the way, comfort isn't just about heating and cooling, like staying at Rob's house. I couldn't hear anything happening outside. I watched planes go by, I could barely see, like I could barely hear them. Um, I even shot a video with my friend, he came over and I set my car alarm off outside and then closed the door and went inside and you could barely hear my car alarm. So I mean, if you're a, if you're a person who likes to, or like a shift worker or someone who likes to sleep during the day or works from home or doesn't like barking pets, there's a lot of benefit to the quiet. So it's not just about thermal comfort that we're talking about here. But I guess the most important thing that a lot of people would be interested in is keeping money in the economy because we've got a lot of money coming into the province right now. This province is booming. And if we're building a society, and I talk, uh, we don't have an energy code at the current time. There's never been an energy code. One's coming online, but it's still fairly relaxed compared to what's possible. And Without having that bar, there's no incentive for people to reach a certain level. So essentially, most people are going to do what's pretty, and that's, that's the problem that we're facing here. And I'm going to show you through different ways of looking at building, you can get the same, same uh, product at about the same price. Um, but anyways, keeping, I think it's far more ethical to pay people locally and uh, do a better job than to subsidize fossil fuels and be dependent on them over the long term. Because what we're doing is building things that last well over 100 years. They should be around, they should be done properly so that at the end of the day, you know, it's just better for us.
And again, that in the interim, we build a more sustainable society, we improve our security, and we in, uh, reduce our environmental impact, and demonstrate leadership to others. So the way to do this is to, is to be more efficient, renovate your home for efficiency, understand how your home uses energy, and then find inefficiencies and mitigate or eliminate them through technology.